Yes, indeed, my people. This is a number 10 day, all right? A day of completion. All right, all right, then. Let us continue with Mary, Lazarus' sister, tells us the truth about his death, part three. Part three, my people. And retrobate because sincere and godly men living lives of devotion to the honors of God, their Savior, all right, our Lord to Israelite fathers are endless, our Savior people, and the good of their fellow, you understand, creatures. And at last, sealing their fate with their blood and dying for the sake of him. So that's why some of us died for the sake of him, people. All right, all right, then. The honestness with which the age did Mary, so she was up in age, all right, spoke, had almost overpowered her. And she stood still and trembled. Naomi, who was profoundly interested in her discourse and most desirous that she should continue her recital, proposed it to her that they should sit down on a grassy bank by the roadside and there wait the return of Deborah. Now, Deborah was an African slave, servant, all right? She was a servant in our Shem household, people, all right, then, from the village, which was not now far distant. And Mary could proceed thither at leisure. After resting herself, from the fatigue of the ascent and the excitement of speaking on a subject in which her heart was so deeply engaged it. Now, that's talking about Mary, all right? Lazarus' sister. She told Naomi that she should wish to proceed a little, a little Father on the road before they seated themselves for that the sacred for that the sacred and interesting spot where her brother had laid in his temporary grave was but a few pace was but a few paces distant. So that means Lazarus was still alive and walking around, all right? Otherwise, she wouldn't have said temporary grave people, all right? And there, where she herself frequently resorted to meditation on the astonishing, on the astonishing event of his resurrection. She would detail to her young friend, Naomi, all the particulars that had marked it the transaction. They accordingly advanced it beneath some, understand, beneath some precipitate, uh-huh, rocks that overhung the road on one side and which were broken in several, you understand, caffeine, extending a considerable depth into the surface. At one of these caves, larger and deeper than the rest, Mary paused and invited Naomi to descend a few rough steps. You understand? That led to a small and rocky error, error in front of the cavern, the cavern where the body of Lazarus was laid. 
All right. Here in full view of the dark scepter, they sat down on a fallen mass of stone while Mary related to her attentively artists the scene that were indelibly impressed it on her own memory. All right, then. You will not wonder, my dear young friend, this is Mary talking to Naomi, said she, at the warmth with which I speak of the blessed Aisa. The blessed Aisa, my people, when I tell you, when I tell you, all right, of all his mercy and love towards me and my brother and sister. He often retired to Bethany from the noise and crowd of the city. And our house was honored by being made his home. The light of his contency, the light of his contency, shed joy and peace over our dwelling. And his words were as heavenly music to which we could have listened forever. Oh, it was a blessed privilege. It was a blessed peer. Excuse me, get demon. It was a blessed privilege to sit at his feet. Oh, yes, I bet it was. Whoo, hallelujah. And hear, and hear his words and receive divine instruction that flowed from his gracious lips, okay? It was in the month of Tisha, a few days after our beloved master had spent a day in our humble drilling on his return into the country from attending the Feast of Tachanet, that our brother Lazarus fell sick, and we soon proceeded that his sickness was mortal. My sister and I were in deep distress, but we remembered the power and love of our royalty Israelite, Messiah Isa, and we delayed not to send a messenger. Now they sent a messenger, you understand? To Bethabar, to Bethabar, beyond Jordan, where we knew that he, our royalty Israelite, Messiah Isa, abode at that time. So he had certain places he was at at certain times, people, all right? We could not doubt his willingness to succumb us in our affliction. For he loved it, Lazarus, and he loved it, us also. Therefore, we only sent to him, saying, Lord, Behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. Now pay attention to what Mary said. They said, my people, all right? Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. And we were fully convinced that he would instantly return to us and heal our brother. But our messenger had not long been gone when a fearful change took place in Lazarus. The fever increased it, 
the struggles of death came on and in anguish and despair we saw our only beloved brother expire so in other words they saw him die did not our royalty israelite messiah aisa know what was passing beneath our humble roof at bethany and could not he who had performed it so many miracles have stayed the hand of death and restored Lazarus to help with one word of his mouth. Such were the thoughts of our faithless hearts while weeping over the bed of death and preparing for the hasty burial which is customary and necessary in this climate so it must have been a hot climax people all right all right then in this climax all right the place where our royalty israelite messiah then abode was a day's journey from bethlehem from bethany you understand and Lazarus was laid in his cold grave almost at the moment when our messenger reached him, who we hoped would come and heal him. The following day, we expected to see our Lord arrive, if not to restore our brother yet to comfort our bleeding hearts and to comfort our bleeding hearts with his words of grace and love but the messenger returned it alone so the messengers took him a day to get there and it took him a day to get back to marry him so that was two days people all right the Hebrew month answering to a part of our September and a part of October. Although Jaffa rats mess, of course, all right. All right then. But the messenger returned it alone and replied. Okay, so the messenger returned it alone, my people, and he re he replied with he replied which he brought us only weak, weaken our expiring faith. So what he brought to them only sunk them deeper into despair, all right, because he didn't bring the Messiah with him, people, which he brought us only weaken our expiring faith. Our royalty Israelite Messiah, Aisa, had said to him, this sickness is not unto death. So that's when they lost their faith because they had seen him die. And then the Messiah said that his sickness is not unto death. And they didn't understand what he was saying, people. All right. All right, then. All right, let's keep it moving. This sickness is not unto death. In Lazarus. And yet, Lazarus was in the grave. <laughs> so they were confused as hell. What could we believe? What could we hope? Two more days, so a total of four days before our Messiah, Isa, got to them, all right? Two more days long, melancholy days passed it away. And we saw mourning in our house wants the abode of happiness and peace and brotherly love now gloomy and silent save when the cry of the mourners who sat with us on the ground burst forth in a wild and sudden wail and caused our tears to flow of flesh and cause our tears to flow of fresh people 